Welcome to beautiful St. Petersburg for the preseason episode of Mazda Road to Indy TV. I'm your new host, Joe Sebastianelli. And I'm JP Mantrola, and let me clarify that. You are the co-host, sir. Well, hold on, wait a minute. We had a competition. I think I won okay, fair and okay. square. Uh, you did, you did. Okay, he's the co-host. I'm just joking around here. You hey. can tag along. Okay, listen. How it feels to be in an online participant of a competition to be here today in beautiful St. Petersburg? It feels so great. I've always dreamed of following open wheel racing around. And so to get this opportunity and to hang out with you and you, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool also to have you here, but it's also even cooler that we are going to have the, one of the best seasons of the Master Road to Indy. Absolutely. It's really the start of a new era. We have a beautiful new car, the Dallara IL-15 in Indy Lights. And for the first time, all three series on the Road to Indy ladder are going to be powered by Mazda. How cool is that? Really cool. Well, this city is also really cool, so why don't we just walk around and get to see it? You know, there's still two months until the season starts, but I can't wait that long. Let's go right now. Hey, Joel, do you know where we're sitting on? I do. We're actually sitting at turn 10 in the St. Pete Grand Prix circuit. They come flying down this straight right here into a sharp left-hander. It's one of the best overtaking spots in the circuit. Absolutely. It might look different in St. Petersburg, but it's going to look in two months more. Uh, this is the first race of the season. A lot of things happen in the off-season. Teams are waiting for that IL-15 to be ready so they can put it in the track and see really what it's all about. Um, Cooper Tire developed a new tire, so it's a lot of things to try and um, finally happen at the Palm Beach International Raceway when drivers and teams will be able to sit down and do the first laps for the IL-15. It's a really fun time for Road to Indy right now, but I don't want to hear you talk about it. Let's listen to what the teams and partners have to say. Along with the new car come new partners. Um, so we have Mazda involved on the engine side now and VP involved on the fuel side, and Tegi Wheels, a lot of great partners here. Not only is uh, new drivers, you know, they're moving up from Pro Mazda, but we also have uh, new teams coming over from Europe with Carlin. I actually had a couple teams call us and say, hey, we hear Carlin's doing this. We figured if they're doing it, we should take a look too. So uh, I do think there's a lot of great interest coming from Europe, not just teams, but also drivers. Um, you know, naturally, Carlin is bringing over a, a, a European driver and Edward Jones that signed with them already. I think we'll see more that will join the series. So. Um, yeah, it's a, definitely a big influx for us from Europe, and we also have a nice stable crop of American drivers this year too, moving up from USF 2000 and Pro Mazda, and that's important, that's what the Mazda Road Indy is all about. Now here we are, the first day of uh, the new Mazda-powered IL-15, and uh, man, it's cool, it's, it's a lot of fun, got a lot of horsepower, and um, I just can't wait to get back in it. What the testing is about is, is constant progression, that's what we're looking for. It's, it's obviously a brand new car, totally different than the old one, so we just need to understand what makes it fast right now. The car's nice to drive, I think that you know the series did a really good job with it and it's just about working through a program and trying, you know, figure out what makes this car fast. Definitely feel more comfortable in the car. It's more about just being comfortable in the first tests and more about the team learning more about the car. So it's not really super super competitive for the first tests. I just have to be in Indy Lights and the car's amazing and can't wait to see how it, the rest of the year turns out. You know where we're going. But I thought you'd know where we're going. I only know my way around the water. Should have gotten a yacht. A yacht, no. The, the trolleys in St. Petersburg are free and it's, they're cool. Look at them. They're nice. At least you do get a chance to see the city and go very close to where the circuit actually is. And it's free. Anyway, do you like the, the, the drivers and the excitement? I really do. I feel almost as excited as they are. Clearly, they love this new car, the Dallara IL-15. So far, so good in testing. Not a lot of issues there, and they're not the only ones excited about this upcoming season. No, there's a lot of excitement also because uh, Cooper Tire developed a new app that keeps tracks on the tires, and uh, we were able to have a demonstration and, and understand really how it works. And uh, at the same time, our friends from Coastwork, they give us a little tour on how it's all the functions on the steering wheel of the IL-15. Let's have a look. The new tire is developed for the 2015 Indy Lights car, and today is the first time every team has the tires on all their cars. With the development of the new tire allowed us also to weigh on how to check inventory, how to check where the tire is on each car, tracking, and working with technical staff on it. It allowed us the opportunity to develop an application that will use a barcode scanner and will, it will track every tire throughout the life of this product, when it gets mounted, when it gets checked out, and when it's on track. All these tires have to be 
allocated, essentially assigned to a car. The way that's done is that they put it on a piece of paper, all the teams for all the cars, for all the tires. It turns into a lot of pieces of paper. So I developed an app. We put it on an iPod Touch. We put it in a case with a barcode scanner. All the Cooper product has barcodes on the sidewall. So this allows the tech team to essentially scan the barcodes, assign the tires that the team says they're going to use for their car into the device itself. So this is the team's car number. Click on the car number. Ask you which position on the car you want to scan. This is a rear. So we'll call this a right rear. It beeps, registers the number, registers it to that car, to that team, and then that is part of the set that's allocated to that car, one of three sets. Now since this record is in here, we can actually save that record. We can back back out to the audit feature. And now when I scan this, it tells us it was assigned to car number one for the test team. That's the car or the scan of the tire. And then in the pits, all they have to do is scan a tire. It beeps and they know what team it's assigned to, what car it's assigned to, what series they're from, where it was assigned the first time if it was a race or two ago. They kind of know the history of the tire. One of the key new components of the Indy Lights chassis is the steering wheel. And it's all new based on our Formula One technology. Some of the key features of the steering wheel uh, are a, the dash display itself uh, has numerous pages to give the driver uh, more than enough information. And uh, all of the buttons perform various functions, talk to the pits and change pages to look at different information the push to pass button, and the pit speed button, and then a uh, acknowledge button for any alarms that may come up. Uh, and then these two items are for the engine to uh, do different configurations. And on the back, we have two shift paddles for the automatic shift system. Well, we are here in Beach Drive in St. Petersburg, joining a delicious coffee and socializing and changing opinions and uh, information about this off-season in Maserati India. Tell us something that you know starting in USF 2000. What do you know? New team joining USF 2000 at Swan Racing. They're from Fort Worth, Texas. They've been very successful in different junior formulas, but now moving to USF 2000, they have a three-car lineup. Not sure who those drivers are yet. They'll be announced soon, but that's going to be another team to watch. Hey, the car looks really, really nice. Gorgeous. Driver change is Aaron Tillets moving from Arms Up to K Motorsport. I mean, he's a really fast driver, and you know, K Motorsport always put a good show, so that's that's a really a contender of the championship. Another one who's gonna team up with him is Nico Jamming from France. He's coming from Abelari Auto Racing into K Motorsport. Interesting to see what he does. Uh, he was really on pace, but not quite there to be in the podium. Well, another team that is uh, staying in the USF 2000 is M2 Autosport, and uh, with the same driver that was last year, Santiago Lozano. Santiago Lozano, just 18 years old from Colombia, has a bit of experience right here in St. Pete. Actually earned his first ever top 10 finish here last season. He's going to be looking to build on that success in his second year with M2. You know, a lot of teams hold on in, in, in releasing the names of the drivers because it's still there's a lot more to go for the first race of the season. Exactly. We still have another two months until the St. Pete Grand Prix opens up everything for the road to Indy Ladder. Still some news, though, as far as drivers go in Pro Mazda, and one of those is with Andretti Autosport, Dalton Kellett. He's got a cool story. 21-year-old yeah, Canadian college student, while he's competing here in St. Pete, also has to worry about completing his engineering physics degree, set to graduate in April of this year, so it's a lot on his plate. Still looking for that first victory, too. He's going to get pretty busy, huh? And Dalton Kellett's teammate at Andretti Autosport is going to be Warren Tan. Tan is actually Malaysian, and he is the first Malaysian driver ever to compete in U.S. Open Wheel Racing. Was a part of Caterham F1 team's Young Driver Academy for the last three seasons. Now joining the Mazda Road to Indy ladder, adding to that international credibility that we're seeing. Another driver coming back to the Pro Mazda is Garrett Grist. He's now with Junkos Racing. He is a rookie driver and did a fantastic first season. He got three pole positions, three wins, and now he's one of the, with one of the fastest teams out there. That's enough for, for now. We have more episodes. Things are going to be changing. Driver announcements. Let's hold on on what's going on in Indy Lights, what the rest of the drivers are doing. Why don't you chuck that coffee so we can get going in this 
city tour in St. Petersburg. Well, JP, we've talked a little bit about the driver changes now, but there are some organizational changes too. It takes a lot to make any season in auto racing happen. You, you bet. It's a long circus of racing that has to travel from state to state, uh, all over the nation and international, because we also go into Canada and Toronto. So, I mean, you're talking about drivers, hotels, transporters, mechanics, so much things that goes into it. Uh, we went to Palm Beach International and uh, we actually talked to Dan Anderson and Michelle Kish and they're experts. They've been doing it for a long time and uh, they brought some good points across. Here's what they had to say. Well, on all three levels, we have, uh, we have additional teams. Uh, Indy Lights, most notably, the, the grid has grown because of the new car mainly but we have several new teams joining us. Uh, Carlin Motorsports, a powerhouse team from Europe, uh, very well-known, very respected, is coming in with at least a two-car team, possibly larger. Uh, they're not at this first series open test because they've actually assembled their cars in, in the UK and they're shipping them over and they will be at the Homestead test later this month. But we expect great things from them. Uh, their driver announcements have started coming out and uh, mainly I think people from their European ladder, so that's exciting. Well, as a grand finale, as a uh, wrap-up for the whole season, all three series together, it's the very appropriate place, Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca. It's a historic track. It's an iconic track. Uh, the drivers all love racing there. Uh, it's got some of the best corners in um, North America. It's going to be great. I mean, we've been there a number of times in the past. We were not there last year, but we're really happy to go back and have our banquet there. Everything uh, should be a lot of fun. Everything from our two transporters, motorhome, all of the equipment, we're, we're going to be transporting engines for the cars, we're going to be transporting pace cars. There, there are so much that actually fits in these trailers. And if you've ever seen us pack up and unpack, it's kind of amazing what actually can fit and what actually gets through. The traveling circus thing is a really good scenario. I mean, they just, you put everything in here. I mean, I, I don't know how they manage to do as much as they can do with it, but I kind of leave a lot of the traveling circus part to our logistics director and our tech guys who help put it up and take it down every race weekend. Each event comes with different logistical challenges. Street races are especially difficult because you're obviously shutting down a whole city. And to do that, the time frame where we need to get in and set up is very specific. So you can't have a blowout on your trailer tire on the way there, you screw up the whole work. So it's, it's actually, a there's so many things to think about. You might have heard down to the last table and chair. That's a challenge. So, Joel, we talk about drivers, we talk about uh, teams, we talk about logistics. Exactly, a little bit of everything on the show, and there's a little bit of everything in this city. A beautiful shoreline, great nightlife. Only thing it doesn't have yet is anyway, racing, but racing. soon. Yes, absolutely. Why don't we just go for drinks, and then we bring a lot more news next episode. Let's do it. <laughs>